And let's face it, it's not so easy to communicate, whether you're the one doing the talking or the listening. So at this point, who hasn't? We've all had those awkward exchanges at a coffee shop or at Jean Coutu. Now imagine being hearing impaired. You can't move closer to hear better. You can't rely on lip reading. It's tricky, right? And probably incredibly frustrating. So let's get some tips on how we can all better communicate during COVID-19 and any time, really. Andreas Selish is the Director of Audiology at Hearing Solutions and joins us now. Hi, Andreas. Hi, Josh. Thanks for having me on the show. Nice to talk to you again. So a whole lot of Canadians are hearing impaired. How, how common is it? Um, a lot more common than people realize. So uh, a publication we done in conjunction with Statistics Canada last year um, suggested that 40% of uh, individuals between the age 20 and 79 uh, have a hearing loss. And what's interesting about that is that there's a large proportion of them, perhaps as many as, as four and five, might just be unaware that they have it, um, particularly when you're including more mild hearing losses. So far more prevalent than people realize. Yeah, and, and, and it's funny, though, when you say it, I think a lot of us are probably going, eh, I might be part of that, like not fully aware or not fully admitting it, but suspecting that perhaps that is the case. Um, Andreas, I, you know, it's so hard to communicate right now, right, with masks on and trying to keep a distance. It's got to be even harder for the hearing impaired. How, how, what are you hearing from people and what, what have people been experiencing? Yeah, I mean, we're hearing it quite a lot, and, and there's several some uh, attributing factors that are that are causing that. So uh, the first is that you know the mask is attenuating sound, so it's like muffling sound as you're speaking. Um, and the the tricky thing about that is um, it, it varies by what type of mask you're wearing. So if it's um, one of the disposable paper surgical type masks, that's um, probably the least impact. And as you move into thicker, maybe cloth masks or N95 masks. Um, it's quite a bit more, and then the worst is, is flash visors. Um, they're doing the most. And, and uh, the really tricky thing about how they attenuate sound is that they block out the sounds in the higher pitches or higher frequencies the most. Hmm. That's um, particularly problematic because most people who develop hearing loss are also developing hearing loss in those higher pitch or higher frequency regions. And um, that's, that's part of what the problem is. So we're, we're doubling uh, the effect in that area. And um, the sounds that we produce there uh, tend to be sounds that we produce by rushing air over our tongue or our teeth. Um, so those are S's and PH's and F's, and they're sounds we don't produce as loudly either. So um, adding all those factors together, you can really end up with uh, with a problem where people can hear that something's been said, but you know you're missing the distinction between words, and and that's causing uh, causing a lot of problems. Well, and I can't help but think about, I have a couple of dear friends who rely almost entirely on lip reading, Andreas. I mean, there's, there's none of that happening at all. Exactly. And so what happens when we're missing out on these speech cues, let's say you're missing an S or a TH type of sound, your brain will try and rely on other information. It's going to use your knowledge of the language or the subject or the person you're talking to or it's going to use um, visual cues. And um, when we're, we're wearing a mask, obviously we're being robbed of those visual cues. So the brain's being forced to, to work quite a bit harder, and it doesn't even have all the, the, the things that it would be grasping for. And so um, people can, can be more easily fatigued. You know, they have to feel like they're on in all of those situations, have to be really dialed into each communication, and it can create a lot of, um, you know, anxiety. And, yeah, and uh, uh, there, there's a lot enough of that going around these days anyway. Yeah, it just it takes it to another level, though. We're speaking with Andreas Selish, who is the Director of Audiology at Hearing Solutions. Um, I, I would love if you could give us some tips on how to improve communication. And, you know, and I said it's like during COVID-19, but really these kinds of tips can help anytime, anywhere, right? Absolutely. And so one of the first things is, is um, you know, make sure you have someone's attention. You know, if you don't have someone's proper attention, they're, they're already starting out behind, and the brain in those situations would have to kind of work backwards and try and rebuild what it maybe didn't initially have. So ensuring that you have somebody's attention is, is uh, kind of key. And, you know, maybe with, uh, without having lip reading, uh, people think that making eye contact isn't important. But there's still quite a lot of nonverbal cues that we're getting. So um, I think that that's a big one. Um, another one I think that gets easily missed is, you know, our instinct is to just, you know, speak louder and, and uh, when there's been a communication breakdown. But um, rather than, than doing that, um, which, which actually strains our vocal cords and changes the way we produce certain sounds, um, it's better for us just to slow down. Um, slowing down gives the brain more time to process information, um, so that's a lot more useful. Um, putting a little bit of thought into how we're enunciating our words, speaking more clearly is more useful. And rather than just repeating ourselves, um, when we rephrase, uh, we're giving the brain more information to work with so it can piece together um, pieces of the puzzle a lot better. 
I'm, I'm thinking about that. You know, our, our instinct is to complete sentences often or, to, like you said, to repeat it, but like much louder. Um, that's the got to be incredibly frustrating for the recipient, A, because maybe they're still not understanding, um, but also because they're aware that we're getting frustrated and not being patient, right? How do we, how do we temper that and try to, I guess, with an idea that we're all in it together? Exactly. I think, you know, when we're a little bit more, like, present in our conversations, and I, I think that can help a lot. Because as you said, you know, these are often already socially embarrassing situations, and, and you know, feeling that aggravation and frustration and being flustered really doesn't help the situation at all. So um, I think when we can be a little bit empathetic and, and more present in our, in our communications, that can go a long way. And uh, we're not used to that. You know, we're used to being in the moment, and, and uh, um, it's, it's a little bit of an adjustment for us all. You know, Andreas, I remember at the beginning of this crisis, um, there was sort of a, a rash of, like, better masks, you know, a better and improved mask. And with that, there were ones with the clear panels. And those seem to, I haven't seen or heard anything about them since. Is that still an option or is that still, I don't know, was it not effective? It's, it's definitely still an option. You know, there's still sourcing difficulties. So we use them in a lot of our clinics, for instance. And, and um, uh, unfortunately, one of the better masks that we use, we have to source from the state and we're not even able to to resell them very easily because they're not individually packaged, so it doesn't make them accessible for, for individuals. Um, we have sourced some that we can sell on an individual basis like that, and so they do exist out there. And when people are having sourcing difficulties, um, what a lot of people have done is resort to people who are making masks. And so, um, like the corner tailor type of thing is uh, certainly an option because they've repurposed some of their efforts into, into making masks. And, uh, I know a lot of those local shops that have done so using a, a clear panel so that we can preserve some of the, the visual cues, which is quite helpful. I'm glad to hear that's still sort of, uh, you know, on the radar because I feel like that, you know, if we're going to be in this as long as it seems we're going to be in this for, there's got to be a better mask. There's got to be a better way for all of us to be able to communicate. Now, we can't go out to eat in restaurants or go to bars or anything right now, but it's hard to hear at those places at the very best of times, never mind adding a, a mask or trying to, you know, place an order or whatnot. Um, I guess... Should we be trying to embrace this time? Is that at least it's a little bit quieter, and maybe that will help that there's not so much background noise happening? I mean, certainly background noise is, is probably the number one culprit um, in, in uh, giving people difficulty in, in communication, uh, particularly when somebody has a hearing loss. And so um, it, I guess you can look at that as a silver lining. Um, one of the, the silver linings I, I see out of all of this is that, you know, if People are noticing these kinds of communication breakdowns are, are something that they're experiencing. Um, that can kind of be the canary in the coal mine for that individual to, to be a call to action and, and then maybe get their, their hearing investigated. Because, um, as we said earlier, if a lot of individuals out there are maybe coping with, it, with a, a hearing loss they weren't aware of, um, I think it would be a lot better for those people to be at least aware of it. And it doesn't even necessarily mean those people have to, to act on it right away, but um, I'm a big advocate for earlier intervention. And if those people can find out earlier, um, I think that's going to give them better outcomes in the long run because a lot of the research that we've seen in the last decade has been um, linking you know, things like hearing loss with risk of falling and cognitive decline and dementia and things like that. So if we can get on top of those things earlier, um, we're more likely to prevent changes at the brain level that could uh, be quite negative for us down the road. So, that would be... Uh, Great thing. If that if that comes out of this uh, pandemic, that would be a great thing. Andreas, great tips, great information. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me on the show. That is Andreas Selish. He is the Director of Audiology at Hearing Solutions. It's frustrating trying to communicate these days, even all the more so if you're hearing impaired. It is 3.45.